I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're all to save welcome to the watching Heavenly Delusion Season 1, Episode 9. Last episode, we watched Shiro shoot himself in the head. Maru is not doing well. <laughs> Rightfully so. Rightfully I so. I am so excited. I Last episode gave me everything and took it away, but then gave it to me again. I... I love what's happening in this show. I love the show so much. I can't believe... I, I don't know what to expect. It's got to be a completely different show going forward. It is going to be a completely different show going forward. We have such a different perspective than we did at the start and of any other end, episodes. Yeah. On our end, it's a different show going forward. God, Not necessarily like they would change how things have been storyboarded or paced yeah, or yeah. how many times we flip from one plot to the other. We have been teetering with this idea and talking about it. Oh, what if, if they were two different timelines? Yeah, yeah. What if? But like we never really sunk our teeth into that or went too far with it. We couldn't. Couldn't allow ourselves There wasn't to. like, an, I guess, enough evidence on my end to feel like I could like jump into that pool and not look back. Yeah. And now we have it. Now and it we was have beautiful. It. it was gorgeous. And. Horribly I, sad by the end. Yeah. But then happy. Because Mimihime is like... I like. It, okay, on her end, <sighs> she as a character, for what we know is inevitable for her arc, mm -hmm. she did get a good send out. So I'm happy for her with that. If you ever needed an eye, I would be there to Aww. give you one. Thank you. I am having some issues with this one, so... Yeah. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Sweet. <sighs> now we're in the facility. Oh my god. The voice. A sword of light. What? No way. Holy shit, Asura. Mina? Or Asura? Or have they always been connected? Did she already? This is when he found her. Or he saw wow. it. He knew. He didn't he The eye. What the f Oh! She saved him. Wow. Find someone that you love. Why? Why did she have to die? To put forward Tokyo in his life? Tokyo? Tokyo? Mani. Mani to you kotomo naikedo. 
ちょっとここにいようかなと思ってコナは絵がうまいね<笑>ありがとう。したやつが時を奪いに来る。で、what what the fuck what the... <laughs> they're coming for Tokyo。they are the group of 14 year olds。that's great。who the hell are you。oh no。時をくまさか。join the nursery。be the She... Could she tell? The nursery. She looks a lot like Mikura, right? She looks a lot like Mikura, right? She looks a lot like Mikura, right? Tooth is back! Ah! Just delayed. What? Great timing. An earthquake? Oh, why do I not even believe it's an earthquake? Whoa. にあれば回収班が来るかもしれない。そいつらより先に目星物を取るんだな。その町に連れてってもらうんだ。崩れ方が半端で危ないな。ここから入れそう。やめとけ。Very dangerous. Oh。大丈夫かよ。Resource collectors. あ、いや。今覗きに来ただけで次元性がしです。Like <笑> Oh, have you? She, she knows! And she's gonna hide it. This lady's gonna fucking hide it. Mimihime. Mimihime is always watching what I'm looking天井の前に浮いてるやつ。不規則に動く光の粒なら眼球の照射体の濁りだよ。そろそろ授業始まるから行こう。そうか。やっぱりあれ。僕にしか見えてなかった。あ、それ。いい。あれ。本当にみんな
それでさっきのマークのことですが知ってるかもしれませんえ本当銃と交換で Oh fuck no じゃあお金でいいです Why did we move the car? 無駄にごねて殺されたらおしまいですから思い出すのにちょっと時間がかかるかもしれません情報を語ることをなりわいにしておりまして<笑>まっ喋ってるうちに思い出すでしょとりあえずおすすめのやつ聞いてやるあ、oh, The atmosphere He's a real storyteller I like it Does he broadcast this? I love him. Juichi? What a theatric. I don't know what the atmosphere is. <笑>ノー。大災害の前に日本の物価のテロ攻撃を受けたとの噂があり、そこから戦争に発展し、特殊兵器が使用されたという説です。いかがだったでしょうか。それではまた別の話でお会いしましょう。CU、バイバイ。
あの箱だいやすごいわ便利よ<笑><笑>もうちょっと調べてみよう。学園長挨拶高原学園には心と体を休ませられる空間がありハロー・ペーシェンス感覚がもう一つよくわからんがいて家があっても時々来れる個人それと塾を合わせたようなもの文明の時代に我慢ねいやそりゃあるか人が何人かいれば我慢はお姉さんどこ来てこの回も高原学園だったのかこっちまた変な鳥のマークかよここのマークを真似た落書きっぽいね盗賊でも住んでたのかなどなくだけどここは俺の目的地じゃない気がするな同じ顔のやつもいないし銃についてたマークをたどってこんなところ見つけたから興奮したけどそもそも俺の目的地と銃に何の関係もない可能性も結構ある Never had any connection. 何これ高原学園ってのは大災害の前しかもその案内の中で世の中のことを我慢地獄と書いてる Hell and 地獄の反対は丸くん天国<笑>マークとこの学園を天国として追っていく価値はあると思うよ高原学園は2施設と18分室おそらく分室っていうのはここと似たようなものだろうある施設ってのが怪しい茨城とならでは本題に入ります時キオ君の妊娠が発覚しましたそう、so、<笑>あの若さでなんてそれより相手は相手は誰なんです園長調査中です概念も男女の区別さえ教えず育てたのにこの土壇場で Crucial final moments これは高原学園を揺るがす緊急事態です Why is it a crisis? <laughs> Why does one of them being pregnant ruin everything for them? Okay, that was episode 9 of Heavenly Delusion. What the fuck is the painting? I feel like the entire episode every time we get into this meeting with the director i'm trying to like be like okay give me a shot of the painting and the most i feel like we get is a lower third of it yeah. like and everything else is around it i know it probably has nothing to do with anything but god i just want to know what it is ah well there's something about it that definitely evokes the feeling of heaven and then what happened earlier on in this episode where kona saw like a sword of light and it ended up piercing one of yeah. the kids legs it has that like feeling of like zeus is up there smiting you with lightning these Angel like imageries of Asura and the ceiling with the wings. Like, okay. Heaven, hell, okay. angels. All right. Penance. What? It floats into the sky and shoots out light? Which kind of reminds me of the Kiru beam, like into、mm -hmm. shooting out light. What kind of face does it have? Don't ask me for everything. Imagine it yourself. Focus on what comes to mind. Might link you, and then Kona says something along the lines of what、that、did you see something? A, a sort, sort of, of light. light, and I don't know if that's connected to the Maru touch, but whatever it is, it feels like it was directly responsible for the cut、mm -hmm. in that person's leg. And Asura can heal, and Asura can heal. Okay, I, I just would really like to before we like. Start talking more. Can we re read what Asura says when she appears in Kona's room before、yeah. she dies? I'm down. I'm down for it. I、oh、was in the、God. very beginning I, of the I episode. I know, but what I just clicked to, I have. I'm so happy. Calm down. Okay. All right. um So we get Asura appearing in Kona's room,、mm -hmm. waking him up. Which you can't see her. On the cameras, even though she is still alive in this moment that she has appeared to him. Yeah. Interesting.、But、she isn't there, I don't think. 
you know? She's, like, projecting herself there. Yeah, which is interesting. No, so, the cameras are not responding. Now I understand why I was born. born. So, so I have come, come to say goodbye. To say goodbye. So she has understood why she was born. Is that now? Do you does she under did, did she come to understand why she was born because of learning something or realizing something? I feel like because of what Mimihime and Kona are the characters that are closest to Tokyo in this place. This episode title is Children of the Nursery. I guess I'll just call it a nursery. Maybe. I'll just use that word right now. And they both have abilities of imagining things that we as viewers know are in fact could be true or could come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And if we're being given characters that exist in this story that are able to have some sort of future telling or vision-like ability, I would be led to believe not that Asura, like, learned a concept or idea in the terms of like the conversation at the end of the episode like oh my god we didn't teach them sex or the difference between male or female i don't think it was also learning a concept or idea that was not taught to the kids or was newly taught it feels i think i would go more towards like got some sort of feeling premonition vision uh maybe what the future would hold like, my first interpretation was like, okay, the direct, intentional or not, the outcome of Asura being removed from the story and removed from Kona's life resulted in Kona's solitude, which then resulted in Tokyo's involvement with Kona, which then resulted in the birth of Maru. And who could we guess is making sure that this initial union between Kona and Tokyo was not stopped. Correct. The cameras were... Is, and, and also, like, Tokyo being able to look at those babies. And Mimihime seeing something that looks like it's still there. Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 is it continued to be Asura's involvement that allowed what I believe to be Maru to be born? Mm -hmm. Um... Now, would Asura be doing that because that is the reason that they were born or because they un they knew now what the reason they were born was and are actively doing something against to operate against okay, it? Okay, so that's an interesting way to spin the idea yeah. of like learning uh why they were born and why that they are here. You could spin it as realizing why you were created by this group of people or because brought here by this group of people. at the end of the episode we see the reaction to what this outcome that that asura potentially crisis put into motion that led to this right like mm -hmm. it's a crisis and it's crucial final moments like yeah. this was something that none of them were accounting for or wanting seemingly so this could have been Asura's plan coming into fruition. You know what's interesting? Everything. Um, <laughs> other than everything. Aoshima, when we get her noticing that Tokyo is pregnant, I, as a viewer, immediately was like, oh, she's not gonna... She, she's not announcing it right now. So she must be like a good guy or gonna keep it a secret from the director in order to protect Tokyo. But obviously it was more so she just wanted to make sure she collected her own like evidence of like that she was sure that Tokyo was pregnant before mm -hmm. bringing it to the director. And it brings me to the guy who was the other option and the fact that he had found the shoe print and never did anything with it. Yeah. And it was such an interest. Okay. On one hand, the, on one hand, uh, what was her name? That you had just said, I Aoshima? Aoshima. Yeah, she kind of reminded me of Mikra. A no, I bit. I get you. And I have somewhere to go with that. Yeah, and in in the case of her being promoted instead of the doctor, it was such an interesting way to convey us this information because we're being told it at the same time we're being told a false narrative. Yes, and what that false narrative holds. I think that could be of most importance here, other than 
um, kind of the difference, like the gender conversation. I think if we take that off of what is happening in this story, what is happening in this story is two people who have given up a child and maybe have turned their backs now on the way in which that their group has been running things and desire to live with their child and the sperm donor and run away from whatever is happening here. Mm -hmm. And I think that that might be what I would want to attach to in terms of how Maru is outside of this world, like yeah. this nursery. Because at first I was like a bit just infatuated with the story that I was like, well, Maru is a guy, like it could have been that. And that's, you know, but obviously mm -hmm. those things aren't connected in that way because of, you know, the way, the, the way that it was shown to us. I... I don't know, man. I, I have so many questions about like, okay, well, within the director and the facility, what is that final moment that we're like, you know, pressing up to? God. And why is it such a crisis? Especially if we're already keeping Tokyo away from all of the kids. Mm -hmm. Why is it a crisis? Is it because we're going to create more emotional issues for the kids because of like taro's death asura's death they're gonna have to deal with more of their friends disappearing which could create issues in terms of their mental stability or well-being or how they view this like cage that they're being kept in because it's not like they're announcing to the kids that it's because tokyo is pregnant yeah but i guess also why are they intentionally keeping all of this like what is this experiment like we've been wondering for a while when they watch the kids like when they saw the kids kissing they were like we never taught them that do you think that like the the name at the top of the paper that we pick up is titled like natural wealth operation do you think that like all these rich people got together to somehow plan uh a, a world ending disaster so that they could live like underground or in some safe haven and like i don't know some ideal society like uh, like we're given like three theories of what happened oh the what God, it was one of them being like a terrorist attack Bro. and honestly i'm still all all three theories i was like Okay, interesting. Now, none of them, <laughs> of course, none of them, but seeing the picture of Asura in this timeline is like, what the fuck? Like, okay, is it is it just evoking the thematic theme of Asura's spirit going to heaven, quote unquote, or is it a tangible thing within this world mm -hmm. that that happened? Okay, so, um, you know, like, the idea that if you, if you created, like, a Frankenstein's monster, like, you create something that maybe should not exist within this world, a, a robot, and then it ends up taking over. We get this idea with Asura that they, the director, there was a line, and it could be read probably two ways, but I, as a viewer, took it as they filled Osura's brain with what Osura's brain was filled with and it was too much yeah. for Osura to handle is it like it goes back to the question of is Osura rebelling against what she was born to be or is she realizing her place in the like what good she could do for this world mm -hmm. and I am I'm I'm feel so torn on everything like I you know, it's funny, you would have thought that learning something like the fact that these were happening any in any other story, if you got the confirmation that your A plot and B plot were on different timelines, I feel like all your puzzle pieces would have finally come together. Yeah. And in this story, it really does very little for me at the moment, and that might just be because I'm being too dense to receiving information. But it's not cracking the case for me. It's not opening everything up for me. 
okay, floating into the sky and shooting out light. We directly see and then are shown a picture again of what looks like to be Asura with wings with the fucking eyes on it. Don't get me started, okay? With the eyes on it. That floating into the sky. The idea with Kona and the, the sword, the blade. We got the picture. It looked like two people were on it in like a heavenly atmosphere or like realm. Like, do you think that this organization is like trying to like birth or house like prophets or something that's like that whether it's mina or some other cult leader like had had prognosticated themselves like there will be two children that will that you could birth in this way that would become the saviors or destroyers of the world like running society um, in an upheaval of society and then running it your own way is consistent in a, as a theme in this show. Like, when we have the White Coats and Dr. Usami, the, one of the main guys that was a part of that other, the group that was against Dr. Usami, as soon as he gets in the building with the generators, he's like, this is my chance mm -hmm. to, like make something here and, and be on top and so this idea that like and then also the story the story of this like group of women kind of creating their own society and structure of that society of course that would happen if there was a giant disaster that separated a lot of people caused mass panic there's going to be a lot of people that are going to look for the opportunity to put their ideals on top. Even if that's not true at all. Even if that's not true at all, people not, do that. Yeah, not true. Huh? It, was, it didn't happen. The women's society thing. Oh, well, yeah, I was never yeah. saying that was true. I'm just saying that yeah, yeah. it's an idea that is, is like, consistently in this story. Yeah. Of, like, pushing your ideas forward. And when people are in need of information or hope or a home, they are more likely to follow you. It's interesting because, like, the kids don't even know what pregnancy is. Like, their idea of children, we've got to see. And it, like, it has nothing to do with sex and being pregnant within the natural way that everybody else knows right like even kona in his imagination was picturing like what looked like a human baby but a bunch of tubes and wires yeah the like and incredibly kona, interesting kona being like they're the same people who took asura are going to take tokyo and mm -hmm. within the same sense of like okay if asura was acting directly uh, in response to these people and the director and whatever their purpose was and and stopped their stopped their progress by killing themselves those people taking away Tokyo would be the same thing it would be them taking an, an, the taking Tokyo away the same people taking them away and it's like does Kona know it because of that like prediction or prognostication but also kona seems to have the ability to like mind wander and walk too i think kona could could find tokyo wherever she is in this facility mm -hmm. and go get her go try to free her Dude. i because of the imagery that kona drew in terms of the baby and the womb it gives me and the fact that we know that a lot of his drawings have some merit at least some of them have merit in terms of coming true i mean the one he was drawing when tokyo like went to go talk to him as a kid was like whales in the sky which like maybe those are man eaters i don't know everything was topsy-turvy in that picture but the fish we know that the fish man eater ended up coming true and i have a fear that do you know what episode it was where we see his drawings? Um, on Tokyo, the one on Tokyo's wall. Mm -hmm. I don't know which episode that is. It's an end of an episode, oh. definitely, okay, but I'll I don't know out. which one it is. Seeing that be Kona's depiction of womb gives me fear 
because of the fact that some of the th- some of the things that he can envision happen it gives me a fear that that was maru Mm. and that the baby will either be taken from tokyo like before she's able to fully give birth and or using mimihime in our a plot as an example like human machine combination like something with tokyo where there's more of uh technology involved interesting like within the baby like within the birth within like i don't know like we saw i just get this like horrible imagery of like half human half technology basically being kept alive like when we see mina it looks like a pregnant robot yeah it does. and so i get this fear that like the baby is going to somehow be extracted and before it's like birth so like not even a c-section you know getting the baby out like i have a fear of them like taking the baby out and growing the baby in their own way i don't think that you're too out of pocket for that at all i could because it seems like they have the capabilities to do that from a very early on living creature Okay, I'm gonna take a second and ask you for your help in trying to find uh, the the episode with the picture. Be right back. Okay. This is so fucked up. Look, you see Asura. You see many Asura. Mm-hmm. That's like seven Asura. Then you see a baby in the womb. Someone looks like they're on fire. A son. Four people laying down with one head looks like an angry moon but that okay that's definitely asura a thousand percent no Mm -hmm. especially when in this episode we see it and it it's a picture that's like distorted enough where when our characters see it they're like oh well maybe that's a bird yeah which leans into what the symbol we've been trying to find the root of is a bird there's so many birds. There's so many birds. I When we initially started this series, I thought that all the man-eaters would be flying. Like, I thought they were all, like, a bird-type Pokemon, you know? Not like we're going to get the fish on the boat. And then when we got the fish on the boat, I was like, whoa. This is different than I thought it was. You have any thoughts on the four bodies converging in one head, the moon, sun being a little, little upset? Or that smiley face laying belly down on fire. I wonder if this is somewhat of... It could be interesting. Don't don't move from the screen. Okay. Um, If this is the story of Asura's life. I like it. We have this angry, what I would assume almost like a metallic, like a, a metal moon, which could give me this idea of a day of fate something natural happening or even like something happening to what is their natural world within this nursery that we know as a viewer is not natural it would be something in the sky in the shooting sky. beams of light right and then we get asura in this this bird form when we see this like what looks i guess it can evoke baby in a womb i think that's what we had initially said when we saw it but it's not really a baby how kona has drawn after this episode it looks seal like in its body maybe more like the babies that cuckoo took us to see Mm -hmm. and when we see these four bodies with an attached head what it evokes for me is asura's mind almost like four people or four consciousness like stuffed in one body that this idea that it was too much for one person to hold Mm -hmm. and then there's like a few other ones that i so fascinating we have the whales in the sky which is the one that i think that tokyo is like hanging up Mm -hmm. in this scene which we like and the drawing of the man eater that we saw you know Mm -hmm. that wouldn't necessarily connect to asura but right i just was because these were the ones that tokyo has in her room yeah i feel like if you think about it from a writing standpoint if your pictures from kona mean anything as a writer 
you would want the ones that Tokyo possesses and then the ones that Cuckoo was given mm. to be specific of why these ones weren't given to Tokyo. What's the meaning there that you could read into that these were the ones that like Tokyo didn't get to put on her walls and wasn't given by Kona? Yeah. <sighs> Juichi. He was a fun what character. What a great man. What an... I see when... When we were trying to get the explanation of why the van was put in front of the building, my thought was, oh, he's trying to make sure you don't steal his car. Which, like, someone could just get into the passenger seat and then get over and steal the car. But the fact that he was blocking what he knew you were looking for in what order a great to, like, man. swindle you. <laughs> great he's storyteller. He's so smart. And he's so cool. And he has, like, he brings such life into this world. He hangs his little, like, his cassette player on his windshield, like, and then plays atmospheric music while he tells his He's stories. He's a true entertainer. Like, honestly, you could have paid him just for entertainment. Dude, I feel like I'm him. Like, I feel like yeah. within within the world of, 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 of wonder that we live in and unknowns that we live in, you, you, you try to piece together... And and convey information to others in such a, in such a, a bombastic way that would lead them to try to theorize or think about things on their own. But it's not just bullshit because there are some truths within the bullshit of like the picture of Asura flying. Like we're trying to we're we as people are trying to figure out what the fuck this world is. And we only have so many facts to go off of. And everything else, it isn't just bullshit and lies and predatory. It's, a lot of it is. But it's it's fun. It's exciting. It's wonder. It's Juichi. What a great character. Honestly, great character. So sad to see him go. He'll be back. Will he? I Honestly, so. if we bump into him again, he'll probably run away. Um... <laughs> Takahara Academy. Yeah. We have a character named Taka within the uh, the B-plot, the nursery, mm -hmm. the kids. Something similar to Usumi and Mimi. Like, we know that they were able to leave at some point. We know that they left and they lived their own Mima lives. Mimahime and Shiro? Yeah. Yeah. We know that they went on and lived their own lives. Just it could just be na a na a word play like name you know it it could have nothing to do with it, other than the fact that oh this just happens to be the place that has the symbolism. We do get that idea in this episode like what if they are not connected at all? Mm -hmm. Like what if they're so barely connected that we've been chasing down a lead that would get us to basically nowhere? Like they could have been connected somewhere. Like, oh, this person who knew about it just happened to, like, like go to this academy or, like, this bird logo on this gun or picked it up from a stranger. And it actually has no correlation to helping us at all. That's totally possible. But the imagery is so heavy there that it feels like it has to actually be connected. Mm -hmm. And we can't doubt that. God, I have so many questions. I do too. Why why a bird? Just because it evokes angelic flying up like how my thing is like how much of what happened like I I don't think everything that happened played out as the direct director in the facility wanted it to. How much of what they wanted to happen did happen or happen in a different way than they intended versus none of what they wanted happening? Like, why was what was their purpose for Asura? Like, that's such a massive cabinet to open. Right. When we started this series and we saw that they were somewhat like surveying and you know, taking notes about the behavior of these kids. I was still trying to hold out hope that there wasn't like a, a darker factor here, or a manipulation factor that it was, it's unethical, ex like an experiment, unethical study of children and 
le- like giving them certain pieces of information, nature versus nurture, giving them certain concepts, but not everything, and then seeing what happens. Oh, we didn't teach them that. They didn't. They then did it. So interesting. But oh. now it seems like they they really aren't getting like they probably have never maybe they've just like never studied human behavior before and so to them this is not what that what they anticipated at all they would have never anticipated that a child like or a young person i think 15 could have interest in a in another person romantically and then create a baby without them introducing the concept there are so many otherworldly enhanced abilities within the children here do you think it has something to do with, like, like manipulating genetics before they're born, and then after they're born, they can only manipulate so much, and the human mind does what it does, mm-hmm. right? It's like they and created also, something and then just put it into their little controlled experiment to see how it worked out. Also, like, we don't really see it from Shiro. We only really see it from Mimahime, and then we see Mimahime's current state. I wonder if there's something to do with, like, where their abilities of, pre- pr- like, prognostication end. Like, okay, when Mimahime was a kid, they were seeing up until this point, and even to their death without realizing it and then forgetting it. Did nothing else come after that? So, like, if um, Kona was alive today, would he have the extraordinary abilities that we were shown this episode? I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I'm gonna me say too. It was all Asura. I was. I'm gonna say that it was Asura giving these things oh, to think? the kids or mm. the other children. Like now that I think about it, when Taka falls from going up the pillar with the robot, what if he was actually in the same way that Kona's fall was stopped by Asura? Like what if these kids have been somewhat protected and or healed by Asura continuously this whole time or like led like if Asura thinks that Tokyo, we want to get Tokyo pregnant. If that's the goal, then the two best people to give visions to are the person you want to father the child and then the best friend of Tokyo, the person that's always going to be around Tokyo. Mm-hmm. I'm rewatching that scene in the beginning with Kona one more time. Children clamoring, gasps. Did you see something? A sort of light. Oh, th- there's a chance that it's not connected to the bleeding, but it surely seems like that is the case, right? The what isn't connected to the bleeding? The, the sort, sort of, of light. light and Kona's visualization of it. It's too happenstance. Yeah. Like, it's too coincidence. It's too right on the nose. It but, happens and then, at, like, literally the same moment. But then we see, like, Maru having a similar ability to Asura. Asura is able to heal others, and Maru was able to heal his own tooth. Mm hmm. God. Right, so why could this kid not heal their own cut? Or might, might have just taken a long time. It might have like taken a long I mean, the tooth growing back did take a while. But also, what could have happened to Maru in, in the womb, you know? Yeah. In, in becoming born into the world. Like, what could have been done to him prior? You think there are other people in the world it, that are like Juichi? Like, that have, like, sign... He, he left the sign behind, too. Like, people that try to sell information that is fake, but with fun atmosphere and yeah. music? Yeah, I'm sure there's, like, tons of them. I don't know. It felt like it was their first time encountering somebody like this. I kind of imagine he's the only one. And he's, he's like a rogue guy in this He's like somebody you meet in a video game and then after you meet him you all you're like where the f- I need to find him again. He was incredible and then you never can find him again. Really? Like, I, was I feel like say he's, he's like pro- in, he's in a video game but there's one of him in every city. No, 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 no. No, like you would program him in that the player only gets to experience him once. Okay. And then you never get to do it again. That's because that's how you'd want it to happen. I just feel like that's the case. He's like a, he's a ghost in of himself. He's Asura. I don't know. Mic drop. 
<sighs> okay, that's all I have for you. I think so. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.